Hi, I'm Rob from B&H, and this is the second in a series of three videos we're doing to help DSLR shooters get better quality audio in their productions. In our first video, we looked at inexpensive microphones that mount right to your camera and output audio to your DSLR's eighth-inch mini input jack. Well, now we're going to talk about using professional-grade XLR microphones on your DSLR shoots. In this video, we'll talk about different types of XLR mics used in video production, and we'll show you how to use XLR adapters adapters to get signal from those mics to your camera's mini jack input and record the sound of the camera's audio tracks. In fact, instead of our usual video camera, we're shooting this video on a Canon 7D and our audio is being recorded on its audio tracks. We're going to take a look at four different kinds of XLR microphones that DSLR shooters often use, handheld dynamics, lavaliers, shotguns, and small diaphragm condensers. The simplest is the handheld dynamic microphone and we're using it to record this segment of the video. Because they're rugged and don't need power, these are popular with journalists. The capsules aren't as sensitive as condenser microphones and the frequency range isn't quite as wide, but those characteristics can work in your favor in, say, an interview situation where you don't really want a very sensitive mic that's going to capture a lot of distracting background noise. This Electro Voice RE50 is a quite popular model. It's designed specifically as an interview microphone for news gathering and field production. The RE50's built-in mic within a mic shock mount and acoustifoam filter helps isolate the mic capsule from handling noise and reduces wind noise and plosives. The mic is omnidirectional, meaning it picks up sound from all directions, making the mic more forgiving when you're moving it between interviewer and subject or when the person you're interviewing turns their head while they're speaking. Of course, the RE50 is only one one option, B&H carries numerous other handheld dynamic mics, including the Audio-Technica AT8004, the Shure VP64A, and many more. Lavalier microphones, on the other hand, are small little microphones that can be attached to your subject and are usually clipped on clothing several inches from your subject's mouth. We use them all the time in our videos. You're listening to this one right now. The great thing about LAVs is that because they're so close to the sound source, you don't get as much unwanted room sound. So for recording dialogue, they work very well. Like the handheld mic we looked at, many popular LAVs are omnidirectional microphones. So if the subject turns his or her head while speaking, the volume won't dip down unnaturally. Now this one clips to my shirt, but there are other models like the super tiny Countryman B6, which can be more easily concealed. The one I'm wearing is the Audio-Technica AT899, which is a wired microphone, which we would normally just plug in right to our camera's XLR input jack. Now, if your subject is going to move around a lot, you'll want a wireless lav like the Sennheiser system. This little ME2 mic plugs into a UHF transmitter and sends the sound over radio frequencies to the receiver, which we can attach to our camera setup via the cold shoe mount. You can also use wireless transmitters with dynamic handheld mics as well, like the RE50 we looked at earlier. The other device you see in this setup is an active XLR adapter, and we'll get to XLR adapters in a minute. But first, I want to take off my lav mic, and we're going to talk about shotgun microphones, like the NTG3 from Rode that we're using right now to record my voice for this segment. These mics have a distinctive long interference tube to help reduce off-axis sound so we can focus our audio capture more directly on our source. Despite that, during the shoot, shotguns are generally further away from our subjects, so we won't get the close mic sound a lav will deliver for dialogue, but you don't always have the ability to wire up your subjects with lav mics, and in certain location shooting situations, the additional background ambience can help establish the scene. Now, in part one of this series, we looked at some shotgun mics that output to 8th inch mini cables and can mount directly to the camera. Well, we can mount XLR shotguns to the camera's shoe mount for one-man run-and-gun situations also. In addition, though, the mics we're looking at today, like Rode's NTG series, are commonly used with a boom pole like this one. The boom pole has several sections that compact for travel but then expand and lock when in use, allowing the boom pole operator to get the mic close to the subject but remain just out of the shot. This one has a built-in an XLR cable inside the pole, which is pretty neat since it keeps the cable out of the way. Our shotgun mic attaches to the boom by means of a shock mount, like this DUSM1 from Pearstone, which has a 3 8 16th thread at the bottom. The elastic bands help to isolate the mic from vibrations, reducing handling noise. Also note that most shotgun microphones are going to come with a foam windscreen, like this one, that helps cut down on wind noise. 
A foam windscreen is adequate for drafty air and swinging boom poles on most indoor shoots, but if you're shooting outside, you'll want to step up to a fluffy wind jammer like this Rycote Softy, which comes in various sizes for different microphones. The wind jammer is sufficient for normal outdoor use, but in high wind situations, you'll need a blimp system like this one for Rode's NTG series. This system uses a dual hoop suspension to reduce vibrations and handling noise, and also features this windshield basket that cradles the suspension mounts. The basket is then covered with this fur windscreen. The NTG-1 is one popular and inexpensive shotgun mic, but of course, B&H has a lot of other options to choose from, including the NTG-2 and 3, both from Rode. The NTG-2 is basically the same mic as the NTG-1, but in addition to running on phantom power, it can run on a single AA battery, although this makes the mic a little longer and heavier. The NTG-3 sounds even better and is designed to help eliminate radio frequency interference that you might get from internet devices, radio antennas, Wi-Fi networks, that kind of thing. Sennheiser also has an excellent reputation for shotgun microphones. The MKH416 has been a popular choice for professionals for a long time now, as it's a versatile performer that delivers excellent sound quality. It's an industry standard for television, film, and radio, and especially popular for outside broadcast applications. If you don't have the budget for the 416, you might want to consider Sennheiser's MKE600, which has been designed for camcorders and video DSLRs with a super cardioid pattern for very good off-axis sound rejection. The form factor and barrel length is quite short, especially for a shotgun that in addition to phantom power can also run for about 150 hours on a single AA battery, and its tough metal housing will serve you well in outdoor situations. One drawback with recording dialogue indoors with shotguns is that they tend to pick up unnatural sounding reflections from the floor, the walls, and the ceiling. So another option to consider for indoor dialogue recording is a small diaphragm condenser microphone with a supercardioid or hypercardioid pickup pattern like the Audix mic we're using for this section of the video. The Sennheiser MKH50 and Shep's CMC6 MK41 are terrific choices in this category, but a more budget conscious option is this Audix SCX1HC. It's a great sounding American made microphone, and the hypercardioid polar pattern offers maximum off-axis rejection, reducing those unwanted reflections and echoes. It's also versatile in that you can purchase other capsules for it with different polar patterns, including omnidirectional and cardioid options. Now all the mics we've looked at in this video output sound to a 3-pin XLR connection. Unlike the video camera that we normally use for our B&H shoots, DSLRs don't have an XLR input, but you do have a couple of options to choose from when recording XLR microphones during a DSLR shoot. Your best bet for audio quality is to use a dual system where the audio is recorded separately on another device other than the camera. In fact, you can hear a bit of the hiss from the 7D's preamps in this video. But we're going to look at those options in part three, though. Since many shooters don't want to worry about operating two devices at once, or maybe don't want to worry about syncing the sound and video in post, we're going to spend the rest of this video looking at ways to record your XLR microphone to your DSLR's audio track. Now this is where the XLR adapter comes into play. A simple inexpensive option is the SESCOM SES-TR153 adapter cable that will allow you to plug your XLR mic into your camera's mini jack. But if you need to power a condenser mic, this cable can't supply phantom power. You'll also still have to deal with the camera's poor quality mic preamps and possibly the camera's automatic gain control. Also, many DSLRs don't have a headphone jack for monitoring, and the SESCOM cable doesn't solve that problem either. So let's look at a more sophisticated solution, an XLR adapter like this one, the BeachTech DXA SLR Pro audio adapter, which we're using for this video. This unit mounts to your tripod with a quarter 20 thread, then you can mount the camera on top to the quarter 20 bolt. It's got two XLR inputs for our microphones or other balanced audio sources, and outputs to your camera's audio input via the eighth inch mini jack. 
This is an active audio adapter, which means that engaging this switch sends 48 volts of phantom power to microphones that use external power, like the LAVs, shotguns, and small diaphragm condensers that we looked at earlier. The preamps sound a lot better on the DXA SLR Pro than they do on your camera, and of course, they have gain control and metering. By turning the DXA's preamps up, you can now turn your camera's audio input level down. The preamps on DSLRs tend to be noisy, so by turning them down, you can really reduce a lot of the hiss in your audio. The DXA SLR Pro also features an AGC disabling function that will override the automatic gain control in cameras where it can't be turned off manually, although that may limit you to recording to only one of the camera's two audio tracks. We did an entire video on the DXA SLR Pro, so take a look at that for more details on its AGC disabling feature. I mentioned that many DSLRs don't have a headphone jack for monitoring, but the DXA SLR Pro supplies us with one. Now we can monitor either the inputs to the Beach Tech or the playback from the camera. Unfortunately, you can't monitor the audio the camera is recording in real time. You'll have to play back recorded audio to hear exactly what's in the camera, so I would strongly suggest doing some test recording first to get your level set, and then play back some audio from the camera while you're still at the shoot before you wrap to make sure what the camera recorded actually sets sounds good. There are other XLR adapter options available with different feature sets. If your mics don't need phantom power, you could get a passive XLR adapter, like the DXA 5DA, also from Beach Tech. Juice Link also makes a few options. The Riggy Micro RM333 is designed for newer DSLR models that already offer audio meters and headphone monitoring. Its compact chassis features three XLR inputs with preamps, phantom power, and versatile mounting options for your camera rig. The Juice Link RA333 Riggy Assist adds meters, headphone monitoring, and AGC disabling for older DSLR models that don't have those features. If you need four XLR inputs, you'll either need a portable field mixer or recorder or possibly a combination of the two. In this video, we're focusing on in-camera audio, so we'll save the recorders for part three and look at an inexpensive field mixer, the Asden FMX42. We focused on the FMX42 because it has a solid feature set at a price point DSLR videographers will appreciate, but B&H offers many other models from sound devices, Went, and many more. The FMX42 gives you four XLR inputs for either line or mic level sources, each with an optional limiter and high pass filter. You create your mix of these sources using the level controls on the front, then mix down to the camera's stereo audio track. Unlike the Juice Link adapters that we looked at, the FMX has panning knobs for all four inputs, allowing you to manually position your sound sources in the stereo field. The FMX42 has the mini output jack compatible with DSLRs, and the output is a mic level signal also compatible with your DSLR. In addition though, there's also a pair of balanced XLR outputs so you can record to an external recording device, like a portable audio recorder for example. But let's leave it here for now and we'll talk about dual system solutions and look at field recorders and portable audio recorders in greater depth in part three. I certainly hope this video sheds a little light on XLR microphones and adapters for DSLR shooters. I'm Rob from BH and thanks for watching. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.